Hello everyone, it's Vandy Ezel, the head card designer, as I choose to call it, even though it's not a real thing, of Thera. So, we're back with another video. This time I am explaining the cards from the first trial deck for Thera, Hiro Kamado's very own Crimson Flame. Uh, Hiro Kamado, if you don't know, is the main character of the Thera anime, comic, whatever we choose to do with it. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and go over his song and um, show off what it can do because it's a good song. So first up, to take a look at our song, we must first discuss the main creature of it, and that would be Crimson Dragon Revan, uh, Hiro Kamado's ace creature. So Crimson Dragon Revan, he is a level 3, he belongs to the Nation of Arizon, as that's where the Crimson Flame is coming from. He has 200 power, and he can deal 1 damage on attack, as well all creatures can do, or most creatures can do, as a matter of fact. So... Uh, his ability is by paying two and discarding one, you can choose a creature from your hand and reveal it to your opponent. If you do, this creature gains power equal to the chosen creature's power until the end of turn. Meaning that say for example you had another Revan in your hand by paying two and discarding one, aka flipping over two cards in your damage zone and discarding any card you want, and then revealing another creature in your hand, say for example it was a Revan, he'll gain another 200 power for the turn, which means he'll get have a total of 400 power if you reveal another Revan. And his ability is not once per turn, that means as long as you constantly have two pay and another hand card to discard outside of the card you're revealing he'll constantly gain more and more power making him an even bigger number this could also possibly bring him to 1000 that has happened before right not to me but i have heard test stories from uh the developer of the game and he has said that he's gotten over to 1000 in the um with just the trial deck alone and that's definitely possible and it's all around just impressive that he can do it. His flavor text being accept the power and fly with the dragon. Interesting flavor text. Uh, reveals a little bit about Revan's character as a whole. So yeah, it's a good card. I think it's really nice. It is the main focus of the song because the whole point of the song is to focus on mass power gaining. It is a straight up, not a one trick pony, but I would definitely say it, well, I would say it's a one trick pony, but I would also very much say that it has one job and it does that job really well. So if you're looking for a deck that's like a one man army, they have one thing that's really big, this is the song for you. So uh, all the cards in this product, by the way, are at four of. So there's Revan. Then we have our quote unquote main level one, uh, Crimson Draco Kid. He is also a dragon. Every card in this, every creature in the song, except for one, is a dragon. So it's a level one. It has the shield icon. Revan, I forgot to mention, has the gift icon over here, as you can very much see. So that basically means on attack, pay one, get a gift check, you reveal the top card, and you know, regardless if it's a trigger or not, it goes to your hand. And then Crimson Draco has the shield icon, meaning that he can be used to defend you when your opponent when your opponent attacks you. So he's a level one with 100 power and one damage, the same stats that pretty much all level ones have the most power a normal level one goes over to is 100 there are very few that hit over that threshold but still there are some uh, for Crimson Draco Kid, his ability is pay one, destroy himself, and choose a creature with Crimson in its card name on your field, and it can deal two damage instead of one until the end of turn. So that's really good. That basically means, uh, say for example, you took Revan over here. If Revan were to, if you were to use a skill, pay one, destroy Crimson Draco Kid, when Revan were to attack and deal damage to your opponent this turn, they'll have to take two damage as, ex as explanatory from his skill. So that's good. Basically, one creature can do the job of two. That means, like for example, since Crimson Draco Kid is so much more weaker than Revan, if you've already used Revan's ability to get a lot of power, maybe hit the even a thousand threshold from it then obviously you want to give Revan the ability to do two damage because it's more likely that they're going to guard the Crimson Draco Kid because it's only a hundred power rather than guarding the Revan who is already in the thousands so might as well make sure that Revan can uh, do more damage on hit since it's the more likely one to hit. Uh, all around Crimson Draco Kid is really nice though he definitely helps benefit the rest of the song he's a supporting piece that I love to use uh, he is rarely used though but genuinely does come in handy when you use him because of the extra damage he can push through so all around nice card four of then we have our safeguard young guard draco kid so level one 50 power one damage the same stat that all safeguards go there are very few creatures that are level one that go to 50 power most of them being safeguards that actually go to 50 power the other ones unless they have a really good abilities typically stay at 100 and even the ones that have really good abilities still sometimes stay at 100 so for young guard draco kid the safeguard ability the ability all of them have basically this means you can only run four safeguards in the entirety of your song doesn't matter if they're the same safeguard or different safeguards you can only run a total for them if they have that safeguard ability and his ability and the same ability that all safeguards have are discard this card stop an attack from an opposing creature basically that means when your opponent is to attack you say for example your opponent is also using Revan and their Revan has hit like a thousand and eleven hundred threshold um, and they're just swinging at your face and you cannot guard it with normal cards because it's way too big 
you can simply just discard Young Guard Dracoquette and the attack becomes nullified. It stops, it doesn't go through. Yes, if they paid one for the gift check, the gift check still occurs, but you won't take damage from the attack. Your creature won't be destroyed if they're attacking a creature. All around you are safe. That is the point of safeguards, as evidenced by the name. All around, uh, Young Guard Dracoquette is definitely really good. He has saved me a bunch of times. Granted, you always want to kind of run a safeguard in your song, unless you think that uh, you would be better off playing cards with more abilities based off your main win mechanic. But either way, um, Childhood has it at four of, and that's definitely a good number you want to have it at. Then we have our ace combo card, as I would call it, and that would be Shield Guard Dragon. So level three, the Nation of Arizona as well, he has the shield icon instead of a gift icon. Most level twos and, well, yeah, most level twos and above have gift icons, but Shield Guard Dragon here is the exception because he has a shield icon. So he has 300 power and one damage, and that's really good because he has even more p base power than Revan himself has the ace creature of the song. You may be wondering, why is that the case? The reasoning for it being this creature can only be placed as a guardian. That means even if you have it, even if you have it in hand and you have an open field you can't call him onto your board which is sad because that basically means you have a 300 shield which is really good because that's pretty much a stop of anything that isn't a revan but the downside is it doesn't benefit your field at all it just can't like swing into stuff but here's the best part about it i said it's a combo card you use it with revan pay two discard one reveal a copy of shield guard dragon you have 300 power to 200 that's 500 power and since it's not once per turn, you can keep doing it. After three uses of that, the Revan has already hit 11,100. All around Shield Guard Dragon is definitely a good combo card because you can either use it defensively like it's intended to, or you can use it as a shield bass and make Revan a lot stronger on his own and then make him probably the most deadliest card on the board in terms of just base power alone. All around Shield Guard Dragon is really good for both defensive and offensive maneuvers, so I think he deserves to be at a four of in your song. Then we have Draco Kid of the Flaming Fist. He is a level 1, 100 power, he does 1 damage, and when he attacks, it gets plus 50 power until the end of the turn. So that means when he attacks, he'll have 150 for the rest of the turn, and if you found a way to restand him and attack with him again, then he'll keep getting 50 each attack. All around, that's really good because that doesn't involve you paying anything, that doesn't involve you discarding anything, that doesn't involve you destroying another creature, that just means that he just has free 50 going in on each attack, and that's really good. That means each attack is getting stronger than the last. That means he's at least swinging for 150 on the first attack, which means your opponent's probably going to have to guard, especially when most level 1s are of base power of 100, which means that he'll easily be able to win a contest of power between level 1s. So I run Dracula Flaming Fist is really nice. He's good in an early game rush towards your opponent, especially if they committed a board first, and a lot of them are level 1s. He's one of the best level 1s I've ever seen, and I do like him a lot, and that's saying something from the guy that made a lot of the cards for the game so all around i think he's really good then we have i think what all of us in the thera community or like the ones of us that have played the game can agree is like the hands down best level two that we've either made or the best level two in this trial deck at the very least i mean best level two for air one of the best level twos in arizona in general i'm just making a point because it is hammer dragon for both me the testers um the creator anyone who's literally played arizona we all agree this is one of the best level 2s for Arizona. So, he has 150 power as most level 2s do. Not a lot of them have it, but most of them have like a 150. And then he has a damage of 1 as per usual. Pay 1, this creature gets plus 50 power to end of turn. Okay. He's kind of like Revan, where in the case that he can gain power, it is less costly than Revan because it's only a pay one instead of a pay two. You don't have to discard one for it. Downside is it can get you relatively less power because Revan gets the power of your other creature, but that's fine because that at least brings him to 200 and you can keep doing it. It's not just once per turn. So if you have enough pay, you can actually bring him higher than Revan if you need to. But the ability that we all agree is the best part about him is when this creature destroys an opponent's creature or deals damage to the opponent, you draw a card. Basically what that means is he, like it said, like it sounds, if he destroys an opponent's creature through battle, or maybe he attacks them directly and they don't defend it and they do take a damage, you get to draw a card. All around, that's really good. Even if they nullify the damage from the creature, as long as it destroys the creature, still goes off. And same with the damage, like even if they see a heal trigger during the damage, as long as they actually took a damage, you still get a draw. So, all around, he's really nice. He helps increase your hand amount really quickly. He can get power re relatively easily, and he's definitely one of the best level twos I have ever seen. I think whoever made the skill, because I know I didn't make this skill, did a really good job. It's balanced, it's strong, it gives a lot of support to the song in general to where you don't have to just rely on Revan winning you the game. All around, I think it's amazing. I love this level two and I give it a four of for that one reason alone. Like it has everything it needs in one singular card. 
Then we have Dragon Rider. So he's the only creature in this song that is not a dragon, and I believe this is our last creature as well. He is a Dragon Knight. He is a level two. Uh, he has the gift icon as well. He has one damage, 100 power. <clears throat> Pay two, when his attack is guarded, you may return him to the hand and one of your creatures gets plus 100 power till the end of the turn. So all around, that's relatively good. Um, paying two outside of Revan is kind of a hefty cost, but it's nice that when he attacks, because he has such low power in the hundreds, it's easily guardable. That means your opponent is more likely to guard it than another attack that's already bigger. And if they choose to guard this one, you can return it to your hand and make another attack even bigger. So if they were at nine damage and they didn't have a safeguard and they were like, okay, I can defend this one and not guard the other one, quickly guard this one, the other one's going to get a lot bigger by it. So all around dragon rider is really good you always want to attack with this one first to try to see or like in the situation where you can push your opponent to where they have to guard it because once they do guard it you can make someone else equally bigger than dragon rider and not to mention you can return him to hand that means you can use him next turn when you call him again and keep using him so your opponent can't touch him all around dragon rider is definitely one of the better level twos he on his own is not good because he requires other creatures to be good but he can bring other creatures to such a higher power level that it actually in turn makes him one of the best support cards in the song i think he's amazing i like him i give him a four of even though he already is a four of in the song and then we move on to our first spell first up we have crimson strength me personally as a guy doing this i did not use to like this card very much but then after i won with it via a top deck on the uh thera versus i mean not there yeah on the shoji versus hero match where i was playing hero yes i've slowly begun to like this card so crimson strength by discarding one from your hand you choose a creature from your hand and you target a creature on your board and it gets half the power of the cre creature you chose until end of turn so the reason why i used to not like this is because this required three cards to work one you had to have this in hand to obviously use it two you had to have a card to discard and three you had to have another creature in your hand and you had to have a creature on your board but the upside to this is it basically acts as a pseudo revan it is semi the same discard cost as revan but at the same time it while it only gives half power it does it without costing any pay and you don't need revan to actually pull off so say for example you had a dragon rider on your field and you had a revan you can discard one from your hand and then reveal the revan and then add 200 and then add 100 power to dragon rider and all around that's really good because maybe you already used up your um summonings for the turn and you've already summoned a level two and a level one so you can't even summon revan but now revan can support you from the background because you can use his power to increase someone else's power all around crimson strength is a really nice support card just because it costs no pay meaning you can spend more power i mean more pay on other skills and you can still increase your power to a grand extent so all around crimson strength is a nice card and i give it a four for that reason then we have Dragon Wings. So for Dragon Wings, it's a very simple card. It's a discard one card from your hand and you may draw two cards. So all around, uh, it's just an exchange basically because the card you discard and Dragon Wings itself are technically being discarded, which means you only draw two to replace them. But that's good because maybe you just discard something that isn't useful to you at the moment or something that you know you can't use in this matchup because maybe uh, your opponent counters it with a certain play. So you can choose to draw two and hopefully you'll get something better out of it. Like for example, you can discard a Crimson Strength when you have not a lot of creatures in your hand to uh, use Dragon Wings, discard the Crimson Strength, draw two, and maybe you know you might draw Revan so you can summon Revan, and maybe you might draw a Shield Guard Dragon. So now you have the combo set up just from one card. All around Dragon Wings can definitely lead to a lot of possibilities. While there is a chance you could end up getting two cards that are effectively worse than the card you discard, it still helps switch out cards in your hand that you cannot use or cards that are not good in the situation compared to the top two possibility that might end up saving you in the long run. So all around Dragon Wings is definitely a good card and I do like it. There's just one draw card I think is better. It's not in this song unfortunately, but it is another song that I definitely cannot wait to cover in the future. Then we have Fire Blast. So this is definitely one of the better traps. It's the only trap in this song, but it's definitely a good trap. So by paying two, when your opponent plays a spell or a trap, deal them one damage. So uh, I forgot to mention with spells, but spells, if you don't know, they can be played during any time during, well, not any time during your turn, sorry. They can only be played during your main phase unless specified otherwise. Like say, for example, one of them said when your creature is destroyed, then you can play the spell. Yes, in those situations, then you can obviously put them outside of the main phase, but otherwise typically they're restricted to the main phase. As for the traps, they can be played during any time regardless of whose turn it is when your opponent activates an action so for this one for example regardless if they play the spell or trap during their turn or your turn if they play a spell or trap and you have to pay pay the two deal them a damage 
all around it's really good it can quickly burn them damage and considering how this song works from my personal experience where you could possibly go down to low hand cards very quickly and you could run out of steam meaning your opponent could overwhelm you with a counter attack and you'll probably lose you want to be able to do them as much damage as possible so being able to get a free burn damage off just from them playing a spell is good because that means they could either um, get racked up damage slowly that means all you have to do is get one less attack in for you to be able to win which is nice or if you've already pushed them to nine damage and this is where they're starting to make their counter attack if they cast a spell while they're at nine damage quickly pay the two and you win the game unless they see a heal trigger all around fire blast is definitely a saving grace and can either win you the game or quickly disrupt the opponent or like make it easier for you to win in general just because of the quick damage it can deal all around i like it it's definitely a good card and that's why it belongs in this trial deck so four of then we have one of my favorite runes, which is Strength of Arizon. So, a little spoiler I want to say, for future cards, or runes basically, um, there are typically maintenance costs for most of them. And maintenance costs are what I refer to as cards that have an on place cost, but that's not the maintenance cost, that's just them being on place. But the maintenance cost being with at the start of your turn, pay either pay one or discard one. Like those are some examples of maintenance costs. And then if you don't do that, then the card is destroyed. So basically, either pay the cost or it goes away. And one of the runes from the trout or the runes from the trout deck don't really have maintenance costs, and that's why I think they're all really good. Like some of them have on place costs, but this one doesn't have an on place cost. It doesn't have a maintenance cost. That means the second it hits the field, it's basically staying there unless your opponent actively gets rid of it. And for strength of Arizona, it's definitely a good rune because by paying one, all of your creatures get plus 50 power until the end of turn. That's really good because it's basically Hammer Dragon's ability, except it affects every creature on your field, meaning all of them go up in power making them stronger and imagine if you had three hammer dragons lined up you pay three all of them have already hit 300 power just off of this ability alone it's really good it saves you pay it makes all of your creatures a lot stronger than before and it makes them very deadly and i like this rune it's not once per turn if i if that wasn't clear by the way and you only need one of them for it to be really good so the rest of them can basically use a discard fodder for dragon wings so that's always a plus so four strength of arizona and now we move on to our triggers. So triggers are special cards where they only have shields, they cannot be called to the field at all, and um, that's pretty much it. And they're not counted as creatures, which means for stuff like Revan and Crimson Strength, you can't add their shield power to the attack power of a creature since they're not technically creatures. So for damage triggers, I believe the damage triggers are ran out of two of in the song, draw triggers are ran out of three of, and the heal triggers are ran out of five of because you can only have five heals at most in a song. It's either that or it's two draws and three damages, but I want to say I'm right on the first one to say it's two damages and three draws. So for damage triggers, when you see a damage trigger during a gift check or damage check, you deal one damage to the opponent. Basically, Basically, that means you can uh, quickly push them to higher damage if you were to take a damage and deal the damage on during their turn or quickly deal them more damage during your turn and the best part about damage triggers are say for example you were about to hit 10 damage and you see a damage trigger during your damage check well because you saw a damage trigger during your damage check and it activates before it goes into the damage zone you deal your opponent one damage and say they were at nine damage and they damage checked a draw trigger in that case they lose because the, their trigger would go into the damage zone before yours does now if both players now if your opponent saw a damage trigger as well then then you have to take a damage and now if you saw a damage trigger then the loop keeps going until one of you stops seeing a damage trigger that's what i like to call the damage trigger loop where at some point in the game you one of you might get to both of you might get to nine damage and then you'll just end up keep going until one of you stops stacking a damage trigger or in the case where you don't see a damage trigger then you just lose automatically unless it's a heal so actually no even a heal wouldn't help because the other damage trigger would go in so that's the benefits of damage triggers they can possibly save you from losing but at the same time they're also the case that can make you lose so and they also have the lowest shield value of 50 shield all of them have 50 shield so that's uh, something to consider with damage triggers so you can always use them to deal more damage but you have to remember the less shield you have and also could possibly make it easier for your opponent to activate their skills and possibly win then them them the game in the end through the damage trigger loop then we have draw triggers all draw triggers have 100 shield and all heal triggers have 150 shield uh draw triggers offer stuff explanatory of what they do they just get you a draw when you damage check or gift check them nothing too special and the heal triggers are also self-explanatory of what they do they um give you a heal regardless of what damage you and your opponents are at basically meaning when you give check or damage check it say for example you only have one damage and your opponent has eight in other games that would typically mean that you wouldn't be able to heal but in this game that means you can heal regardless of what damage you're at and regardless of your opponents at which means you can go down to zero damage so 
uh, all around heals are good, but unfortunately you can only run five of them because we don't want them being too broken. They have 150 shield though, that means they can block a lot of attacks. Draw triggers, acting as cards that get you hand card. They have 100 shield just so they can guard some attacks, but they can still possibly get you another card that can guard and also increase your hand to call more creatures. So obviously you want to run those and then damage triggers are like the ultimate offensive card, but at the same time they could possibly be your downfall. So that's why they have the 50 shield. And then finally, this is not really a new card as much as just a different art of something earlier. Earlier you saw the common art of Revan, the one that would be in every trial deck, and obviously this one's going to be in every trial deck as well, but only a one copy of, and that would be the SP art of Crimson Dragon Revan. Let the crimson flames roar brightly, hear the king's roar, descend and show your blazing rage, I summon Crimson Dragon Revan. And with that quote from Hero when he summons Revan, I would like to say I hope you guys enjoyed. This was a fun video making. Um, now you got to see every card in the Arizon trial deck, and now you get to see for yourself how strong it is. All it does, while yes, it only focuses on power, it does that drop really well, and it can bombard any defense with a huge number, break it down, and finish them off in a blaze of glory, no pun intended. So without further ado, I will we'll see you all in the next one, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, Bye.